Hi folks, this is Ezra at the Firestone Art Studio. Today I'm going to take us through how to paint uh, a baseball glove canvas. It's called Let's Play Ball. So to start off, I have a cup of water for rinsing my brushes. I have three brushes today. I'm using a small, medium, and large brush, although the exact sizes don't really matter super much. I have my pre-sketched canvas with my design on it, uh, and I have my paints. I'm using phthalo green, green oxide, deep red, raw sienna, raw umber, neon blue, and titanium white. Acrylic paint is also a bit messy and does stain clothes, so I'm wearing an apron today. I would advise wearing an apron or smock or some clothes that you don't mind getting paint on. Uh, this painting is going to take about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how fast you paint. So let's jump right in. To start off, I'm going to use my big brush to mix one part green oxide with one part phthalo green. about equal parts, and I'm going for kind of a green-blue color. There we go. This is the color that I ended up with. So this is going to be uh, our grass. I'm going to use this color to paint from this uh, farthest line up here up. And the top half of our canvas will be this, uh, this color green. Remember, as you go to paint the edges, for a more finished look, if you would like. And since this is our grass and I want it to be textured a little bit, um, I'm just sort of doing like short brush strokes once I get un uh, into the uh, into the canvas itself up here to give it like a little bit of a grassy vibe. It's cool if it doesn't look super like grass because we can always go over it too if we're unhappy. Awesome thing about acrylic paint is that um, you can always paint over it if you're not happy with what you have. You just let it dry and then go back over it with some new paint. So I'm going to paint right up to my lines here. And it's okay if I paint over them a little bit, as long as I can still see pretty much where they are. So don't worry too much about not painting inside the lines. There we go. And a little bit of that grass texture. Awesome. So our next step is to use uh, titanium white. I'm going to use our medium brush. And I'm going to paint the ball and the baseline over here, just this, uh, this white line. So that's just straight up titanium white. Let's start with our baseball. All right. And this white line over here is our baseline. I always like to paint white even if the canvas is already white because uh, it helps to give everything the same sort of paint texture. It looks a lot more finished than if you just leave the canvas white. All right, I have my baseline and my baseball. So next up, I'm going to, uh, to paint the dirt of my pitch over here. So it's gonna be raw umber, which is our dark brown color. This one right here. So I'm gonna use my medium brush again, uh, just because I want to get this little strip of dirt as well, and that's gonna be tough with my biggest brush. I'll do that first. I'm just gonna paint in this little strip of dirt between the baseline and the rest of our field. Alright, and these colors are still pretty wet. It's okay if they blend together a little bit. 
Uh, we're talking about grass and dirt here, so if they if they blend a little, that's totally okay because that's kind of how grass and dirt look. And I'm just going to finish up painting this whole bottom half of the canvas down here with my raw umber. super easy we have our background awesome so we can move right along I'm just gonna rinse my brushes off so I don't uh, contaminate any of my other colors so I'm going to mix one part raw umber one part raw sienna and six parts titanium white uh, for our glove color so that's gonna be one part raw umber clean my brush one part raw sienna Six parts titanium white, so mostly white, a little bit of those two browns. I'm just going to mix those up until I get the color of a baseball glove. And uh, if I'm not super happy with my color to start off with, I can always add in more, uh, more colors as I go. I think I want to make it a little bit more yellowy. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that raw sienna. I'm going to do a little more raw umber too. Just play with it until you get a color that you like. There we go. I think that looks pretty, clo pretty close to a, a baseball glove. So I'm going to paint in this whole thing around our ball. Uh, you should be able to... Oh yeah, I'm going to add more yellow anyway. Uh, you should be able to see your uh, sketch lines right through this color as long as you don't paint super, super heavy. Um, you definitely don't want to put down too much paint where you can't see your lines. So if you're having a, having a hard time seeing them, uh, try using a little bit less paint with your next, uh, next area. I'm just gonna be, I don't, I don't care so much about the middle, that's uh, that I'm just kind of throwing paint on there, but on the outsides, near these lines, I'm going a little bit more carefully and slowly so that I can get a nice sharp edge. Awesome. And like I said, if you end up going over your lines or anything, uh, you can always paint over it. Acrylic paint is uh, it's very user-friendly. You just have to let your paint dry all the way, and then you can paint over anything that you don't like. I'm just going to be careful painting around my baseball too, because I want that to stay white. Got a good base color on my glove there. I can just barely see the lines through uh, through this color. They're not super vibrant, but I can see them well enough to tell what I'm doing. So I'm gonna rinse this brush, and I'm going to use my small brush to use raw umber to outline the glove and the, uh, the stitching here. So I've got my dark brown raw umber, and I'm just gonna go around the edge of this glove and do a little outline. This might be tricky if your paint is still wet. Uh, I'm going to power through and see how it goes, but if you want to wait until it dries, you can. Um, you can just hang out and wait till it dries. You can touch up any places that you're not happy with yet. Uh, or you can use a hair dryer if you have a handheld hair dryer that can speed up the drying time a little bit for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and not worry about it. I'm getting a pretty good outline. 
So I have a tip if you're, uh, if you're painting outlines and you have uh, kind of an unsteady hand like I do. Uh, I have a hard time keeping my hand still when I'm painting like this. So what I do is uh, if my painting is dry enough, I can put my, my pinky finger down on the painting itself to steady it. But if it's not, I'm holding my, uh, my right hand, which is my dominant hand, in my left so I can keep it a little steady up on, uh, on the table there. So I'm gonna nice and steady make this outline. And if I get uh, any colors that are not raw umber on my brush, I'm just gonna rinse it off so that I don't muddy up the painting too much. And I can't use my left hand, so on this side, I'm just, I have my pinky up against the, the canvas to steady my hand. painting a nice careful outline here. When I'm doing the inside, it's going to be nice to have the paint still wet a little bit so that the colors blend together a little. Uh, if you are going to dry your painting in between these steps, I would probably choose to do the inside first so that you can get that nice sort of smudgy look. Alright, so I've got my fingers up here. just about see the lines of my sketch through the paint. But if I don't get it exactly the first time, that's okay. Like I said, you can always go back over your painting, especially if you still have the mix uh, that you used for this part. Go ahead and follow those lines with your raw umber, with your dark brown. And outline all of those interior lines. some stitching down here in the bottom. So same thing. I'm just going to use my raw umber to make those little stitches.
stitching goes just about up to here. A little higher on this side. And around there. Awesome. So I've got a couple other little detail lines here. Got some stitches here on the thumb. I'm just letting these colors blend together a little bit. I'm not super worried about it. Two, three, four stitches down here. And a couple on this side too. Cool. I've also got some on this first finger, but I painted it in kind of weird the first time, so I'm just going to touch that up before I go back in with my, uh, my stitch color. So I have my original uh, glove color, and voila, I can paint right over it. Sometimes I'll need to do more than one coat, but I think this will look pretty good. While I'm at it, I can go ahead and blend those, uh, those outlines in a little bit. So I'm just using my uh, wet brush with my original glove color. And my outline's still wet, so I can blend it together without any problems. If it starts to get too muddy, I can rinse my brush off and get a little bit more of this color on here. This blending is actually making shadows uh, on your on your piece, so it's giving it depth. It'll make it look a little bit more realistic. There we go. I have to worry about getting in between all of these if I wanted to, but I think that's pretty good. spot right up here and awesome this is looking pretty great so far guys so I've just got one little spot up here on the side on the uh, connection between the fingers and the thumb and I forgot that this part is see-through so I have to go back over that too Still got my grass green color, so I can go ahead and use that. I might have to mix a little bit more of it, but that's easy enough. It's a one-to-one -one phthalo green to green oxide. Done. And let me scoot that back in there. This is a good example of how uh, acrylic is really malleable, and you can fix your mistakes pretty easily. It's okay to make mistakes, especially with acrylic. There we go. So now we can see through our glove. Awesome. All right. So I've got a couple more stitches up here on this uh, this connector between the thumb and the finger. So I have my my raw umber, and we have stitches this top part here on our glove. Excellent. Have a couple of stitches here. One, two, three, and these stitches between the fingers that keep them all in place. These ones are just like little X's. There we go. So at this point I can touch up 
anything that I'm not super happy with yet. I can make these lines a little bit darker if I want. You can go back over the outline if you wanted to. I'm gonna go over some of these stitches to make them pop a little bit more. It's up to you. Anything that you're not feeling yet, you can play with a little bit. And we're gonna move on to the baseball itself. So we're going to use our medium brush. And take just a little bit of raw umber on it. It doesn't have to be very much. Uh, you're just going to get some shadows around the baseball so that it looks like it's uh, resting on the glove. So I'm painting this underside from like about halfway here. And blending that together with our glove color to make a nice shadow. When I'm blending colors, I like to use these short little brush strokes to get it uh, nice and blendy. Once again, if you go a little too far, you can always go back to your original glove color and get some more of that in there. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have our glove, we have our baseball, and we are just missing one detail. We need our stitching on our baseball. Um, so for that, we're going to use our, uh, we're gonna use a small amount of neon blue. Uh, we're gonna shade the baseball itself first before we go into the stitching. So I'm gonna use my medium brush, just a little bit of that neon blue. And in the same places that I had the raw umber before, in the same sort of direction, I'm going to shade this baseball up to about the same point. This halfway mark is where I want to stop. Um, and I can go back in with titanium white if it's a little bit too blue. But this is an easy way to add some shadow, make it look like a 3D ball. And I'm using a little bit of titanium white now to blend that in. Awesome, and I can still see my, um, my little sketch for where the stitches should go. So I have deep red for that. I'm just gonna use straight deep red, and I'm going to uh, make little Vs. Stitching on baseballs kinda look like, looks like little V marks. So starting from one side and following that curved line, I'm just going to do little V marks where those stitches would be. All the way up to the edge. Other ones are going to be just the same, same direction. Got my V's. And they'll go all the way to the edge of the baseball. So we've got our baseball stitching looking good. And at this point, all of your colors are down. Uh, if you wanted to call it quits here, you absolutely could. Um, I'm just going to touch up a couple things on my end. I'd like to use raw umber to, uh, to outline this ball a little bit more, deepen those shadows. You could put your favorite player signature on the ball if you wanted to. Or add any other details that you'd like. Make sure you sign your piece too. And 
I'm just using the same technique that I talked about earlier to sort of blend these colors together a little bit better. That's about it. This is a fun, easy project. And you end up with a really cool result. All right, thank you for following along. If you, uh, if you made this uh, image, if you followed along on this tutorial, we would love to see your work. So if you post any photos online, please tag us. Uh, check out thefirestonect.com and our uh, Facebook and Instagram pages for more online classes and tutorials, as well as our to-go kits that you can take home and do right from your house. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in, and stay safe. Have a great day. Bye.